I want to sneak in a question that I've gotten several times from the okay. people who are watching. And okay. uh, one of the most common questions is, Ben, what do we do about those puffy shiners? Now, you're talking about purple, the color, or um, the puffy? Well, there's s some people have I don't know what you mean them. by shiners. Okay. Shiners are... When I think of shiners, I think of a black eye. Yeah, um, some people mention the puffiness. Some people mention that bluish. Uh, okay, you want to talk about that? Because yeah. that's a whole that's a whole topic. Oh. First of all, I, the most important thing that you want to understand about that. This is so important. You ready for this? Yes. It's not the skin. It is not a skin problem. It's a puffy problem. It's a <laughs> it's a blood problem. It's okay. a circulation problem. It is not a skin problem. And this is. This is a, a classic example of how the skincare business takes advantage of people not understanding the structure of the skin. Remember the first program we talked about the structure, how you yeah. have to understand this, how the whole thing is put together, the collagen, the elastin, the, the sugars, the beef, the candy coating, the sprinkles. You got to understand what's happening here. You got to understand the skin because the manufacturers are not going to tell you. They will exploit and they will they take advantage. It's not fair, but that's just how it is. Caveat emptor. Did you ever hear that? No, I haven't heard that. That's from ancient Rome because there were, there were predators in ancient Rome too. Caveat emptor means let the buyer beware. Ah. Caveat <laughs> emptor, right? Uh -huh. right? Caveat warning emptor, the buyer. Caveat right. emptor, right? So you, you let the buyer beware. That's why we do these videos. That's my mission in life actually is to help people understand all of the stuff. So they cut through that baloney, cut through that crapola. So here's the deal. The skin is under the eyes is extremely thin. It's one of the thinnest places in the body. It may be the thinnest place in the body. Okay, so you're seeing a window to your circulatory system when you look through in this area here. If the blood is sluggish, you're going to start to get leakages. You're going to start to get pigments starting to leave, blood cells starting to leave. It starts to leave a kind of pigmentation in that area. But it's not a pigmentation on the surface. It's blood pigments in the circulatory system that are stagnant. Right? And the puffiness is a kind of fluid leakage. Okay. And whenever you have fluid leakage, and you're observing it, this is happening inside your body too, yeah. but you, can, you have a window to your circulatory system here. You follow? Yep. So it's a circulatory issue, and it's a big problem. Number one, it could be related to the digestive system and food allergies. That's a big problem. You know, when the immune system is activated through the digestive system, the entire immune system, the entire body becomes activated. It almost like it puffs, the, the body puffs up under stress, under all kinds of stress, whether it's immune stress or it's a long-term chronic stress, there's a puffiness that takes place. Now, in the long, if it happens long enough, you'll end up wasting away. But the first, the first beginnings of that stress reaction, that immune reaction, is a sort of puffing up. And it shows up in the various tissues of the body. So you're seeing the manifestation of uh, a sluggish circulation, an act, uh, uh, first of all, it could be an activated immune system or it could be a combination of an activated immune system. You know what I mean? A, a, yeah. Like the defensive response to something you're eating usually. Kids will get this, by the way. Yeah. You'll see kids, right? That's usually dairy or grains or something Lots like that. Lots of kids. The kids are so puffy nowadays. If you see puffiness under there, you're dealing with a kid who's got a food allergy. Okay. In kids, I mean. In older people, it could be the circulatory system. It could be blood that's not moving around like it should. It could be sticky blood. You know, as we get older and as our immune system becomes activated more and more and as we suffer from this stress, our, uh, our blood starts to clot. The clotting mechanism is tied to stress and emergency. And so when we have stresses and emergencies from food all the time, degenerative disease, lack of oxygen, lack of nutrients, our blood starts to not move as effectively. It could be a liver problem. It could be blood that's not moving through the liver appropriately. The liver starting to get clogged up. It could be hypertension. It could be all kinds of stuff. But it's a circulatory issue that is following, secondary to, some kind of stress in the body. And so that's how it should be regarded as some kind of burden in the body, usually a digestive burden, but it, it could be anything. Or, you, or sometimes a digestive burden, but it could be anything. So you want to take that as a, that's a serious issue. If it's a kid, you know, pretty much it's an immune issue. But if it's an older person, you're dealing with the, the, the beginnings the, the, of the, 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 the degenerative disease process. The beginnings of it, uh, the observable beginnings of yeah. it, because it's probably happening somewhere else in your body. Right. But it's the observable beginnings of it. Okay. Okay, wow. Well, that's, um, that's a lot of good information. To so here's in. the thing, though. If you want to really do something topically, look for things that have lymphatic drainage elements or some kind of, some kind of vasodil 
You know, it'd be tough. I don't even want to say that. It'd be very so tough. Really, sometimes, I'll, sometimes I'll give you the peptide creams that supposedly yeah. improve the drainage, but I don't even know if I would say that. So it's really, it's treatment. about um, you have to see what's in your diet, uh, what foods are irritating. You have to make sure your body's getting all the proper nutrition. You know what? It's almost, it's almost ironic in a way <laughs> that we care about our, this little tiny sliver of tissue <laughs> under our eyes and our entire body is like... <laughs> Falling apart, yeah. we're dissolving, yeah. you know, we're dying. And these two little lines right here. You People know, get surgeries big. and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, the, it's a sign that the body is, is just falling apart. Okay. So you got to you got to really address that. Again, if it's a kid, it's still not good, but you could turn it around. Okay. It's an allergy of some kind. But in the, an older person, it's usually the markers, the beginnings of some kind of circulatory issue, second, uh, leading to de uh, a degenerative disease of some kind or breakdown of some kind. Wonderful. Well, you know, I think with people just... Why is that to, wonderful? No, That's well, funny. no, no, no. Wonderful <laughs> the, that you're giving us this information because as people stay tuned, we will eventually talk about all these, uh, the nutrition on the inside and pieces start falling together and it's sort of like a puzzle and all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, I know what I need to do. Eventually, because it's not that complicated. No. You know, the whole thing really is not that complicated. Good health and the whole bit. It's like nutrients... Don't eat the bad stuff. Yeah. Breathe, and you know, <laughs> um, not a lot more salt, right. nutrients. You know, the basic, the basic nutrients. Don't eat the bad stuff. Breathe, relax. It's not a lot of stuff. It really is not. The body is amazingly perfect. You know, it doesn't really need much. It just needs the raw materials and some detoxification and some oxygen, and that's basically it. What's sad is that it's not a lot and it's not difficult, but most people are really hurting in that area.